Welcome to Familiar Territory, an anime podcast hosted by two white dudes who've been friends for over 15 years. Here we talk about the history and influence of anime, as well as review anime new and old. So grab your talking cap and transform into some comfy clothes as we step into a familiar territory. My name is Grant. And I'm Brantley. Heads up, spoilers on the way. Check the description. See if you're safe to listen. Brantley, I want to talk about Yuki Yuna is a hero. I want to talk about it so bad. <laughs> I, 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 we finished it Wednesday, last Wednesday, right? Yeah. All right. So this is the first time we're doing this, but we're going to start uploading every two weeks so that we can fully watch a show or at least more of a show so that our reviews make a little bit more sense instead of just a first like first impression video because we find that these are a little bit more in depth and a little bit more fun to talk about yeah so we watched all of yuki you know as a hero why i don't know we kind of liked the first episode mm-hmm. um and then we finished it mm-hmm. and i liked it a lot less mm-hmm. uh brantley what 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 when did you kind of feel that the show was degrading like even the first episode wasn't phenomenal it was serviceable it was fun i enjoyed it but yeah 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 okay. <laughs> yeah oh 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 no oh no 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 okay oh god oh no okay oh uh, ooh. Ooh. <sighs> Ah, okay. Are you okay there? So Bradley? that's like at the timeline. Was that was that comprehensible? Was that the timeline of the show? Yeah, that was like <laughs> the that was the journey map. Of, All right. um, of my experience so like well well thank you for listening to this episode you now <laughs> no! have to decipher all of Brantley's uh, nonsensical noises to determine what we felt, no. or we could let's break it down. So what 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 made you start? feeling bad about the show um you know I, I like there was like you said it wasn't phenomenal to start but i was willing to kind of give it some lenience because it was a pretty positive sort of like pretty optimistic show right you know it's like eh, it's not doing any harm it's it's being brutally uplifting um mm-hmm. if somewhat repressive in some ways it kind of was feeling like okay we're just kind of pushing the problems down instead of actually solving them but you know, maybe we're going to turn that around um the the definitive point where i think you and i both knew there's no going back was when togo transformed yeah no um, so we talk we we talk a lot about transformation sequences because in my opinion they can make a magical girl show because they can be really really stellar and really really unique or they can break it and the problem with yuna is that some of the characters like it's itsuki karin um they have fine transformations and then like yuna's a little problematic at one point but overall fine fu has one weird shot but overall fine and there's togo's transformation scene which is aberrant (laughs) it's it's not normal it's it doesn't belong in the same show i i i think i there was a time when i realized that people make edits of anime i don't remember when this would have been like i was i i think i was a as becoming a young adult and it struck me that like that people will make like dirty edits of existing anime that are not dirty. Um, because I saw someone was like, okay, that's not, that's not right. That's not real. And there's a comment like, oh yeah, it's, it's this like DVD edit of it or something. And it's kind of it, like blew my mind of like, oh my God, that can just happen. People will just put the work in for that. It feels like that happened with Yuki Yuna. Like someone snuck in and changed it. And then it they does. aired the wrong version or something. Well, it's it... totally out of character. So, so, for those who haven't seen it, uh, and I'm not going to get into super detail, but there are 
chains that are very, very overtly sexual, and there is like a long, like couple second long boob shot during this this mm. transformation scene, yeah. and it's bad. Uh, it's, I it's will bad say enough though, that all the characters are underage, but then also it happens to be the one character who's disabled, which just makes it feel like more wrong. I don't know. It's just, it, it's especially because it's, really it's like it's it's framed as bondage, and yeah. like that combined then with with the with her disability, it's like oh, it's fucked. And yeah. the worst part about it is, is if you remove that, we were really really happy with. Togo's magical girl form. Yeah. It, so yeah, that was a that was a bright spot. It like it was kind of this oh oh hey oh oh you know like it's up and down because we we were worried that the show would have her transform and they wouldn't have her you know they would they would be like oh her legs magically work again she can fight and they would kind of get rid of that that representation positivity out of the way. But they, sh- the, her her form actually uses that to her advantage. She's a sniper character, so she has a bunch of guns, um, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> um, and then she has these ribbons that support her and move her around. And then when she goes into this like super beast form, what's the what's the form Mankai. called again? The Monkai form. She has like a jet powered like ship. It's really cool. But they they position her, and it's almost exclusively only her, which makes it really, really weird. You mm-hmm. don't really see a lot of pervy shots of any of the other characters. But any time that you get a scoped-in shot with her looking down the scope, it is ass first. And it is so uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's like straight out of Sword Art Online gun gale. It's just all over again of just like ass shot. Um, it's it's pretty bad. It's like why? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm having a hard time putting it together. It's just yeah. It's so it does not make any sense. So we were talking about uh, the when we when we first did this um, the review the original initial response. We, we, we kind of talked where we wanted it to go. Um, a lot of we a lot of the things we wanted to see are oh you know, we want to see their powers. We want to see how they develop as characters. And even then, it felt. I think the problem I have with Yuki Yuna as a hero is that it it feels like it's almost there at so many points. Mm-hmm. There's a a, a part in near the when they're fighting the 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 bad guys the the 12 demon people and you you meet this new character who we mentioned earlier Karin who comes in and she's like oh I'm a I'm a veteran and you're like oh cool are we going to see the different hero clubs are we going to see the different characters no just her uh, okay and she's fine but it, it it frames this show. The show frames itself as there's a lo- there there are people that can be heroes, and if you get chosen, you're a hero. But it doesn't delve deep into that, and I don't think it delves deep into a lot of things. Here's something that made me made me kind of shocked. Um, we there the the plot twist at the end. Spoiler alert. I mean, you should know this. Is that they live in hell. They are a single city surrounded by a hell dimension. And it is being protected by this god. Now, it seems like it comes out of nowhere. Because they don't talk about it often. But Brantley, they do say... When they they tell the year and they talk about the date... They mention 300 years after a god. And so it's like 300 so-and-so. It's not like 2032 or 2012. Mm -hmm. It is... A different year and then you realize that to these characters there was an apocalyptic event that took out place outside their city because we talked about this remember we were we, we were wondering because they 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 rarely touch on it they rarely go into it and i know it's going to sound really out of place because we probably after we get done with this initial rant we'll get back into an organized mm-hmm. podcasting format but they don't explain things well and they don't show things well 
So our characters for the whole time knew something was wrong outside their city, but they don't bring it up. It doesn't come up in conversation. It doesn't mention anything. It's almost like these characters have a tendency to just, you know, not deal with problems and instead just power (laughs) through them. Yeah, no, (sighs) absolutely. So let's, let's, Let's dial it back, because like yeah. I said, I was really excited. So I'm kind of coming out of the gate running. Mm-hmm. And We're let's, just windmilling let's kinda... right now, everybody. Let's... <laughs> so let's break it down, and we can set up a little bit of a better uh, structure. Mm-hmm. So we talked a little bit about uh, some character choices and a little bit about the plot. But let's talk about, let's first talk about the positives. I think that I think that's something that we should kind of i don't want to gloss over it i want to talk a little bit about it because i don't i don't know how much you enjoyed it Mm -hmm. uh i had a lot of fun with some parts yeah and i want to i want to hear your opinion so let's talk about the positives what did you like about yuki yuna as a hero um i did like togo as a character emphasis on did um at some point i feel like the character is assassinated and turned into two different things um one which is still, you know, the the sort of confident de facto leader of the team, um, who's very interesting to follow, and the other is, I don't know, like a a strange blob that gets sort of pushed into the plot thread, and just sort of is is then glopped along, um, but uh, when Togo gets to be Togo you know, then, uh, she's great, uh, great character. Um, at the very least, her competence is refreshing in the cast. Um, mm-hmm. I, I do kind of like the, the blissfully ignorant attitude of the show in some ways. It doesn't pan out by the end, um, because things don't really get resolved properly. Um, right. but in the meantime, like at the, at the beginning, you know, it's, it's kind of nice. That's a very, like, teen spirit kind of attitude you know that you you're young and you get to have that pretender moment i don't think the show awakens beyond that but um again we're dipping into negatives um other positives there were times where the music caught me off guard and i did enjoy it um it's it's not many times you'd expect so like it's never from well-timed gags that music is always just kind of your regular droning laugh now music (laughs) music yeah um but uh there's like occasionally a music track that steps outside of like conventional sounds um and becomes its own little thing and and, and i like that a lot um i wish i could track down I'll, i'll need to look sometime and find it um i guess like the opening theme gets a little bit into that um, but when they dip too far into like the choral stuff, um, then that also kind of becomes tired to me as well. Yeah. Um, I feel, I feel like, I feel like doing a, a choral arrangement or having any form of like angelic voice church music and dark depressing senses, it's a little overdone. It's hard to do well. And the show doesn't do it well, mm-hmm. but I, I agree there. I, I can't even be specific about the times that I liked the music because we, we did watch it relatively fast. So we weren't able to like dwell on specific episodes. So it was just kind of watching a very long movie, mm-hmm. but there are, there were moments where I was like, Oh yeah, this gets hyped. One of the things I liked about it. I did like some of the character designs. I liked it's, uh, Itsuki's outfit. I thought it was cute. I thought it was well-designed and she had this sort of, flowery druid motif going on and i really like that i i did like yuna's design uh a lot of them seemed very jrpg like Mm -hmm. um it kind of reminded me of some of the classic classic final fantasy job outfits so you know you look at yuna and she's wearing this this monk like outfit and it looks good Mm -hmm. i i liked it i liked it a lot um some of the action sequences were fun you got a lot of fun powers. The Mankai sequence when they first did it was cool to see yeah. how that, that that was hype. I remember watching that. We were watching it with some of our friends who were not in the long haul with us. I'll say the turning point where they use their Mankai and they they each walk out of it with something taken from them. 
that's where I thought, oh, the show's going to get good. I, yeah, same. I was about to change my tune. Um, I, I agree. There was, there was, so, so during this part, they do their Super Saiyan Ultimate Forms, and they look cool. Like, Togo gets, like, a jet with guns. Like, a lot of guns. It's cool. Uh, Yuna has these arms from Nintendo's hot fighting game oh. arms. Um, Itsuki and Fu don't get cool extra appendages or devices, but their outfits look sick. And they have these little rings that they can step in and out of to, like, unequip parts of their Monokai. And mm-hmm. it looks really good. And then afterwards, Fu loses sight in her eye. You know, Yuna loses her taste. Atsuki loses her voice. And Karin, who, you know, had this idea that she was the veteran, the powerful one, wasn't able to use it. So she lost nothing. And so she kind of feels like it's her fault that her friends lost their powers. Or their, their not powers, but their senses. And it's good. Yeah feels dramatic it's and then stakes. you what'd you say it's got stakes it does and then you have you can't episodes. taste stakes <laughs> she can't taste stakes for for some of the moments you realize like fu losing her eyesight isn't particularly detrimental to her as a character but atsuki really liked to sing and now she can't sing and then yuna really connected to togo because she created she, she they became friends through her snacks so it was these not huge stakes in terms of like losing a life or losing a limb or becoming paralyzed from the waist down, but they were stakes that emotionally were impactful. And for about two episodes, you have just these differently abled girls hanging out and doing good around their community. And it lasts a little too long. Mm -hmm. It, It seems like it would make a fun representation representative anime and talk about you know the the life and stuff about that kind of stuff if it was done well i could see that itself being a fun anime but we're not here for that we're here for a magical girl show and once that little slice of life section ends the anime nose dives yeah um but i will say mankai or sick Mm-hmm. All right, so now that we've gotten done with the positive plots and we talked a little bit positively of the characters, what are some of the overarching negative things that you could that, that aren't you know deal breakers, but are things that are kind of red flags? Can we talk about the whole like disability healing thing that they've got going uh, on? I I want to talk about that at the end. I do. Okay. I do. I I, I think that. Uh, you know what? We can talk about it now. So I, I think that's a good, I think it's a good segue into how this anime does things right, then wrong. Yeah, it drops the ball constantly. So so from the get go, you think that Togo, who's the differently abled girl in the wheelchair, is just does not have use of her legs, and they do a really good job at representing her life in this this with this way and she does regular things she's incredibly competent in a lot of places and she does have struggles but she overcomes them and they even tie that into her power mm-hmm. it's normalized it, yeah it it's normalized but it's not ignored and i think that's something that a lot of representative when it comes to differently abled stuff tend to ignore they they tend to normalize it but they don't show they don't always show the struggles because mm-hmm. it's not you know it's different and so it's great and it looks it's so much fun and you like to see it happen and then it turns out it's a plot point a very important plot point so togo was a hero before anybody else and so her losing the ability to use her legs was part of her original hero training that was her using her mankai and losing her legs and so at the end of the show when yuki yuna inevitably becomes the hero they all start to regain their senses itsuki gets her voice back Fu gets her sight back and togo gets the ability to walk again and so it goes from being this representation normalization as well as showing how to do it well because the the ribbon movement and turning her into this gunslinger was sick it was a great idea Mm -hmm. and then they just were like "Uh it has nothing to do with that She's fine now, and they, they 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 treat it like it's 
something that she's she's able to walk. Look how great that is. And it really, really hinders that impact that we felt at the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and everyone else gets their their voices back and all that stuff. And while that's not as impactful because we knew they lost that due to them using their ultimate form, we didn't know that about Togo, so that it felt very, very lazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, this it, again, yeah, as you said, you know, the show sets good things up, but then fumbles them. Um, you'd hope that this, like, this bright and sort of optimistic attitude, you know, is essentially carried into yeah, you know, things got worse, but we will carry on with them. Instead, it's that, but also we fixed it. We fixed right. disability, and it's like, uh, don't it, it's don't do yeah. that, <laughs> don't. And and one of the one of the things that I think that ties into the entirety of the show is that it likes to pretend there are stakes. It likes to pretend there's something on the line, and there never really is. Yeah, or at least it's not shown. So so halfway through the series, the the characters realize that if they continue to be heroes, they'll eventually lose the inability to do things. So they meet a girl who was previously a hero was previously in Togo's original hero party who has basically lost her entire motor function and because they they lose their motor function 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 <laughs> god damn it <laughs> um, they lose their motor function because uh they can't die which is kind of a neat you know double edged sword where it's like oh you will never be able to die but you will slowly lose the ability to do anything Mm -hmm. and then so so all the characters lose something important to them and then there's one part where karen karen who is worried about you know not being able to be with these people or not be able to keep up with her friends finally goes monkai and it's a sick scene and you see her and every time she does it she gets a little like brace around what she loses she loses her legs she loses her arms she loses her eyesight she loses her hearing and it's like oh my god that was a big sacrifice except it happens in the second to last episode before everybody gets their 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 light their senses back yep and so you you see the sacrifice you see the stakes but they don't matter Mm -hmm. and i think that really makes the ending of the show bad yeah because you want to see welcome to familiar territory a show where we always talk about madoka magica oh here oh 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 i can pull this off from the where is it okay here it is uh here it is tinfoil hat i'm gonna pass it to you across the internet so so before i put this on i'm gonna just talk about it aside for now um but i i will keep this tinfoil hat yeah um so Madoka Magica is a show about despair and hope. And part of the reason that you see this despair is because you see the characters face it and deal with it. You know, you have character deaths as early as episode three. You have character deaths throughout the show and you see how each individual character deals with it. But they never rip away the idea that you can fix things. So you as the viewer are always hopeful that things will get better. Magia, uh, Magical Girl Raising Project is despair with no hope. Everything is bad. No one is happy. Nothing good happens. So you don't really care too much because it just is a cycle of badness. And so you don't get to feel, okay, maybe something good will happen. Or you don't think that something good will happen. You're always expecting the worst. Yuki Yuna is a show that's all about hope and all about doing things right that you don't care about the goodness because you don't feel how the goodness impacts the story. Mm -hmm. Because there's no bad things that happen in Yuki Yuna except for like the last three episodes. Yep. I do want to, I'm going to keep this tinfoil hat because I feel like that is a completely long and other way to talk about it. So, Brantley, I talked a lot. What do you think 
are some ball dropping moments to you. Um, here's a ball dropping moment. I'm gonna go grab some Kleenex because I'm gonna get a little sniffly. <laughs> All right. Thank God I'm oh. editing this show. I'm back. Oh man. Uh yeah, and that's why Brantley McCord is a piece of shit. What? Oh, sorry. Ugh. I just went on a long tangent while you were gone. Hey, that's um, all right. So, so things they dropped the ball on. Mm, things that I already haven't mentioned. Um, let's see. I I totally agree that like the the stakes are something that the show really had going for it and then you get the reset and it's done. Um I'm gonna quickly apprehend potential dissenters here, like, well, Madoka also does the reset thing. Yeah. But something is still lost. And in fact it's the the central character of that narrative is removed. Um and therefore the the motivation behind the story's events essentially is that cataclysm um it's very bittersweet um so sure it's it's a deus ex machina but i feel like it's deserved here the characters just keep trying harder and it works out way too well um it's it's the kind of thing that makes you start cracking open all these other like broken eggshells and like wow they didn't solve this either huh and you go to the next one you find you just realize that like you're just standing on them you're, there's just eggshells everywhere um oh fuck yeah. it's my kitchen <laughs> um it's and so like one of them in particular they they get these messages they're like hey kill these 12 monsters okay uh reasonable thing for them to do in in a 12 episode show and so it tricks you into thinking you know one monster per episode um but then it re- it gets revealed at the end that there's just like an infinite number of these things spawning out in hell space and so you have to wonder like why did they even get the plot point about 12 of them anyways why did the was it taisha why did taisha, taisha. Why do they? Yeah. Why do they even bother to say like, "Hey, get those twelve, and we'll be good"? It. They're not on like a contract. They didn't prepare any other girls that we saw. Is that just because they expected by then they'd be just absolutely like wiped out, or or what? I don't know. Um, well, one of the things that um, we when we talk about ball dropping. And how well so so this show wanted to do the lying narrator thing, like so many other shows like to do, where you have a trickster playing tricks on people to get them to do things that they want. And the problem is is if you have a lying character, you have to set rules and you have to make it make sense. This didn't make sense. And it really could have, because you had this entire cult of people that so many people knew of mm-hmm. and yet it's never, ever utilized properly. Yeah, they rarely interact with the actual cult members. They kind of show up at one point and then help teleport the group along somewhere else. But, like, outside of that, any of the parent characters who, hey, that'd be a great way to sort of sow seeds of dissent and, and deceit into this, you know, create that unreliability, um, you never really meet any of the, the parents. Um Two of them are, you know, essentially already gone when everything starts. Um, another gets, like, one really rushed face and shadow moment, which is really poorly composed and just doesn't really add anything besides threading together, oh, Togo was a magical girl before and it has to do with cult. Um... Not to mention, like the the cult ends up being like right, which is weird and uncomfortable. Yep, it, it, like, it's really weird because they they really set up the idea that these cult members are bad, that they're using them. You've that been they deceived. Are... What is there to hide? <laughs> Sorry, right, everyone, it... we're in a hell dimension and we need people to fight back. Good news, there's a way to do it. So we'll just have to work. 
as, as best we can with these circumstances. Thank you for understanding. And Bao and everyone, I think, pretty much can just coast on that. It, it's they, they, yeah. There was this theme of deception throughout the entire show. Fu deceives the girls by creating the hero club so that she can get them to be heroes. And then you have the Taisha deceiving the girls and lying to them about their, their powers. You have this entire theme of deception that goes nowhere. Because in the end, when Togo rightfully gets pissed at them and is like, well, I'm going to kill God. They're like, Fu, uh, Togo, you can't do that. That's wrong. And she's like, ah, you're right. And it goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. Now, I do know that this show has two more. It has one more season that takes place after this one. And then it also has a third season. But they weren't planned. So you cannot use them to justify <laughs> what happened in this season. Oh, I also... Um, Don't make a reply video at us. <laughs> oh, well, that please, was very 2007, please. 2008. <laughs> um, We're so already late inter- to this party. You can't be late to this party with us. <laughs> what's interesting about this show is that um, the director of the show is uh, Seiji Kishi. I, I'm, uh, I'm bad at pronouncing names. You're good. But he, he did things like persona for the animation which was really good uh he did uh some other popular shows that i'm not finding right now because all i can see oh he did all the persona 3 um he did all the persona 3 movies he did he did a lot of the video game adaptations including me and brantley's favorite danganronpa and danganronpa 2 and danganronpa 3 and he also directed despair girls (laughs) Those would so, be the it, anime adaptations, right? Not the games. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I know, I know you have a, a strong, strong feeling on those. Mm. Um, but they, it was the writer Kakashiro has some. It makes sense when you see what he wrote. Uh, he wrote a Kami Gakil. No. Yes. Uh. <laughs> Continue. so oh. so I, I i read about that later i was reading uh reviews of the show granted and like, that. he, like that's like the anime writing right i imagine that was a manga first no no he wrote the manga no no yeah and i i know you're not the biggest fan of a comic got kill i'm not the biggest fan of a comic got kill but once you put it into perspective perspective it all makes sense doesn't it yeah the the inability it, to create nuance <laughs> the... right right Ugh. which which is weird because i and i i think that's you know i think that's one of those things where it, it, you can almost get it you can almost feel it working and then it doesn't um, i would love to meet one of the many people many is a strong word i'd love to to go back with to the few people who recommended hey brantley watch a comega kill it's the best thing and just say you know what same person you should watch yuki yuna is a hero I think you'll really uh, like it, and just and just hope that that sets some gears in motion. You know, well, and, and the we 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 do have a friend that likes a comedy got kill who watched a little bit of Yuki Yuna with us, and you you know what he said? He said I like it because it's fun, and you know what? That's fair. Fair. You know, you know and I, when I, I talk to true. him, about I don't com- want to disparage people for liking a comedy got kill. I just don't vibe with it whatsoever. <laughs> We are we are right here. This podcast is so that we can talk about anime in a way, way analytical way that makes our opinions sound smarter, but they're not at all smarter or, you know, even more valid. It's just too white. We're just talk very anyway. well sunken into the armchair. <laughs> we love our deep, deep armchair. There's, there's two of us, so that way one of us can pull the other out. <laughs> Uh, but I'm too far in my armchair to pull you out, Brantley. Oh no! <laughs> That's why this podcast so, will never end. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it is. It's by a, the guy that wrote a comic Yeah, but. It, that that's that's you know it, it makes a little bit more sense why the cult of deception doesn't go anywhere while everything is very very intense and sudden and good but also not it's it's superficial yeah you know it the the stakes don't play into the show the stakes are a little weird and it does have some bizarre choices with characters and how they they are um 
And that's what I'm going to move to next because we talked about the goods and the bads of the show, but I want to talk about the goods and the bads of every of the five main characters. Tall order. So that is a tall order. I'll have so I'll have a good follow up after this, but let's let's get right into it. So I'm going to do it in no particular order, except I'm probably going to put Yuna last since she is the titular hero mm-hmm. of this show. So let's start with uh, Kari. Mm-hmm. Karin comes in uh, at like episode four or five, so she comes in a little bit later. Um, she's a hot-headed tsundere with twin tails. She's literally a trope. Um, yep. do, do you think that she ever goes past this trope? A little bit. Um, with sort of that like survivor's guilt thing she's got going on. Um, with the whole overcompensating thing, it's at least a little deeper than just assigning the the character trait to a doll you know it, the, battle girl high school this is not like you know so right. hopefully that is a compliment you get to run forward with but <laughs> unless um, you really like battle girl high school <laughs> yeah yeah and then oh man oh, gotta go back to love live uh see you yuki yuna no um <laughs> look like i just don't know that she adds a whole lot um i agree I, I want to say that she does because like she is because that's what Sundere is built for you know when you have that like Sundere character they are a shit starter they they're meant to cause conflict you know um they're they're kind of almost like the contrarian of the anime world and right. yet like they. I'm not even upset about them softening her up pretty quickly I think that was the right decision. Um, g- given the characters they had already built and the situation they're in, but like, it just kind of feels like she never becomes what I don't know. I just wanted more out of her. How about that? Let's say that. Yeah, I I, I feel the same way. I feel like she. <laughs> We're not going to talk about we're not going to talk about that yet, but there she comes in later in the show. She is a shit starter, um, and it seems weird that she she has some fun little moments where she's like, "Well, this is my job. I get it done. I'm done. I'm not going to be your friend." And then she becomes friends, and it's kind of cute. Mm-hmm. It's a little fun. I. I liked the animation they did with her practicing with swords on the beach the first time, Mm -hmm. but the fact that they do it like 10 more times to the point where we were able to call it out every single time, it was like, uh, you got really excited that you were able to animate that so well, Mm -hmm. and you just want to keep doing it over. And it's the same animation. I Um, I do like, like the health nut thing they've got going for her. Oh, yeah, where where she's like obsessed with taking vitamins and being healthy. I I did too. Yeah. It's a nice additive to to the layer of characters she's got. Well, it's because it, it, you know she wants to be a hero, mm-hmm. just like everybody else. But she focuses more on her physical body and how she can take care of herself outside of her magical girl form. And I really, really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think that she is a little. She falls a little flat, and it sucks that her only real exciting big character moment is her sacrificing herself. And we don't even get to see the impact of that because it makes Yuna cry. And that's it. You know what could be worse. Very much so. Yeah. I think, I think, I think Karid was probably one of my, I'd say she might've been in terms of utilization. She's definitely not my least favorite character. Um, but I, I feel like because she didn't have too much going for her, it's hard for her to be my favorite. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to move on to Itsuki, who is the... Actually, let's not talk about her yet, because I think I think her and Fu... I think you need to talk about Fu before you talk about Itsuki. So let's talk about Fu. What did you think of Fu? I, I almost think you can't separate Fu and Itsuki. I think that they they work best with each other. Um, uh, and well, it still, yeah. works like I I'll start with Fu at a base level I don't get the whole like being unfunny all the time thing like not to say that like that's 
that's a way of life. I've been there. Um, I've I've yeah, been there really. all twenty five years being of funny. being alive. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, it's it's weird because it's like she's intentionally making these sort of bad jokes and things. Um, I get the feeling that's just a cultural difference. Like that's like a. It feels like at least it feels like girls being girls, and that's fun. Yeah. Um, but as a viewer. This is a piece of fictional media which is designed to entertain. So sometimes it's kind of like, okay, I get it. She's not funny. Let's move on. Um, well, and what's what's weird about her unfunniness is that if no one addressed it, it probably would have been a little bit more charming. Yes. But every time that she made a bad joke, the characters would be like, why is she making a bad joke? Mm-hmm. It It was very punched to the face. Like, yeah. It is bad. Ha ha ha. Isn't that great? They're and... they're rim shotting on every single one of these. It's it's just it never gets a break. Um It it doesn't. It the the only thing that would be worse is if the characters would fall on their faces every time that one of these would happen. Like you know. They fall over and their yep. legs are sticking up in the air. Um thank God we didn't get that. But you know right. I, I do think that Fu does have an interesting character concept um being sort of the the guardian of Itsuki um and and therefore having to to have this matriarchal role in both the club and at home I think it's a solid part of the show um you know it would be hmm yeah it, it, and, and I think I can't separate that level of quality from how she works works with Itsuki because they both have this, like, I don't want to be a burden thing going on. Um, Itsuki has the benefit that she's got her dream that gets worked up. That's, you know, perhaps the, the emotional high point of the entire series. Um, But uh, I, I do think that they, they work better together if you would perhaps if you would remove one or the other then then they just wouldn't quite work if you tried to say pair up um f- like uh fu senpai and yuna or or fu and togo and you take itsuki out or vice versa, you take out Fu and Itsuki looks up to Yuna. Like, it just doesn't... Without the domestic factor, it kind of falls apart a little bit. Um, so I could appreciate that. What do you think? I, I agree. That was what I... You know, that was one of the things I was going to talk about. I really liked their relationship. Um, I, I, did, I thought there was a little too much agreement mm-hmm. for siblings because I have an older sister... And, like, I love her to death, but, man, did we argue when we were younger? Mm -hmm. And I felt like we could have seen a little bit more of that. But at the same time, I am glad that we got mostly just, like, a nice relationship. Yeah. In fact, one of the very few emotional parts in that show, which was ruined by the music, was when Itsuki loses her voice. She wanted to be a singer, and Fu finds her, her voice diary about her trying to apply to be... I, th- I think she wanted to like sing for like a company or something. It was a contest or something like that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, she wanted she wanted to win a singing contest, and it Fu has a breakdown. And at this point, Fu knows that they've been lied to. Fu knows that she won't get her voice back, and so Fu freaks out and is like, "I'm gonna go kill the, the Taisha," and it is a pretty good moment. Mm-hmm. It is one of the very few times you see the stakes that have been put in place actually affect the characters outside of that episode. And it it's good. The music while they're doing it is terrible. Mm-hmm. It's the ending song and it's just it doesn't goes, fit. Doesn't fit. Um but other than that it was a good scene. And I really wished that Yuna wasn't a part of it cuz she like comes in and blocks an attack and Karin is trying to stop Fu from killing people um but that's beside the point um but i like that i like that they they watched out for each other Mm -hmm. um it it kind of upsets me that we didn't even get to see like did we see the taisha's reaction 
to her like no they they, 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 no of course not (laughs) this show loves to just avoid tension in weird ways you know like well you you think we're building up to a little scuffle between itsuki and fu but then we just drain all that you know we we just release all of the pressure we just you know open up the tea kettle and okay it's all gone right Uh, well because right after that is when they find out they're in the hellscape yeah like literally right after it yeah but it's a it's a it's a solid moment and it was good. So I also liked I liked Fu's not not her jokes but when she would pretend to be like a demon lord with her eye patch or when she would make like really really like bold statements yeah, she's that a goofball, were ball, you know? Like yeah, I can appreciate and it was that. Fun. And I liked I liked when Itsuki lost her voice. I liked a little like how they how they worked a lot more on her facial expressions and how they worked a little bit more on like what she did. I thought that was it, it was once again really really well done, you know, normalization of a character who's a phonic. Mm-hmm. And I I liked it, but once again, it doesn't last too long. Yeah. Um so now let's talk about you know, I know I know that you're going to talk about Togo longer because this show has mad spoiler alert for our next talking point, Madoka syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh so well, let's talk about Yuna before we talk about Togo. Mhm. So, what are your opinions on Yuki Yuna? Not the show, you know, but the character. Yuki Yuna is not a hero. Wow. She's not. Bold statement. Bold <laughs> fucking statement right there. Really. I, I was thinking about like turning this into a conversation and we could sort of battle about it, but like I just uh, She doesn't help. She, like I I, I, she, I she punches the sun. Yeah, that's that's great. She's the she's like the superhuman version of Yui from K on. Which that's neat, but like, I, I hate that whenever the show is about to like have an actual emotional turnover, where things have to be dealt with and and people have to hurt and then heal, Yuna is essentially putting band aids on everything. Um, th- there's there's no time to sort of let it scab over because here comes Yuna with like you know the the fire hose approach to just like okay problem's over we gotta be strong gotta be happy it's just blunt and unfortunate um she she actually does that for herself and that's bad too <laughs> remember because yeah. the, the one time that we see Yuna have any other emotion besides happy optimism is when Karin basically sacrifices her body to save them and she breaks down and you're like man that's great it's a very very emotional part uh Yuna's already back up and happy yeah um it's it it is weird and I think that I think that we it it, you do kind of get this sort of not character from her she sort of exists to just exist Mm mm-hmm it feels like she's shouting the point of the show at you, but I just don't want to listen to it. I already don't like, yeah, as 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 someone who has battled mental illness, in in the forms of clinical depression and anxiety, um, I I I very much don't agree with the whole pull yourself up by your bootstraps mentality. It's not worked for me. It does not work for anyone I've met who you know, is, is facing, um, you know, these non, these, these neurodiverse situations. Um, right. It's, it's, it's never just, oh, figure it out, you know, oh, just ignore it. It, You know, support is undeniably a better way to make it through. We live in a society because humans trend towards that by instinct, you know, um, we work better together. Um, 
and and that's been empirically proven by literally any kind of infrastructure coming out of all of this history we've had. Um, and so for this show to just sort of say, no, no, we'll be okay at everything, including the, like, the actual, like, end of the mortal world just kind of sitting at their doorstep just bugs me. Um, yeah. I, yeah. It's, it, it's, it, yeah, go it's ahead. Uh, it's, it's when, when I talk about the show only being about hope, it's because as much as you, Yuna has so much say in everything, she's very loud and she doesn't shut up. Mm-hmm. And that's fine in a character, but we we don't have a foil to her. You have a moment where Togo is a foil to her for like literally half an episode. Mm-hmm. And then it's immediately revoked. Yeah. So they, they, are you ready to talk about Togo? Brandly? Not quite. I actually want to talk okay. more about Yuna. Um, Yuki Yuna is a problem. Here's <laughs> 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 the thing. Like... <laughs> Oh, I can that be, can that be the tagline under our? If it, if it fits on the graphic, our... it can be. Uh, yeah, Yuki Yuna is a problem. Man, like, oh. I didn't even think about that. It just look, they decided to make a show that's about conflict. They did. If this was a show about playing guitars in a light music club, then yeah, this can work fine. But they wanted to make a show about tough decisions and, like, mortal peril. And they decided right. that the best way to go about that was this, and I don't agree. I right. I genuinely think it's it's problematic based upon what, what, what it's forming in, like, a big picture. Um, th- th- there is a, an element of this show, it, it leans into, like the topic of like you know end it all like in in suicide and stuff like that um and and it and in that sense it goes kind of both ways if we're looking at that lens then yuki yuna is a hero because she's saying no doesn't matter if you're alive then that's better than dead you have the infinite potential to find a better circumstance you have the infinite potential for, you know, support to find you or, or you to find what you need. Um, that there's good in the world and we can get you there. So we have to we have to stay alive and we have to keep fighting. I can right. get behind that. But that doesn't coagulate with that mantra applying to how they solve problems. For them to say, don't worry, it's going to be fine, instead of having a sister-to-sister talk about these building issues, you know? Um, when it comes to repression and ignorance, that's where Yuna is problematic. Um, the, the characters are all like on course for obtaining knowledge that's going to help them develop. For example, Togo you know, coming across the revelation that, yeah, everything is fucked. Um, and Yuna's response to, Yuki Yuna's response to that is, don't worry about it and just keep attacking these things. And then they do a big enough attack that apparently it wipes them out. I don't know. that The logistics of that escaped me, but... They punched the it sun. It worked, and that's the issue. <laughs> you, right, right. You, you reject They're... reality... Um, and you're okay, and that's not okay. Um, all, all the characters who, in this show, are using knowledge to sort of punch a, you know, up against the circumstances, whether it's Karin, or it's Togo, or it's Fu, at every single turn, Yuki Yuna has to be there to say, stop this fighting, and, and, and cut that out. And guess what they always do? And they were always put in an antagonistic lens before that. Karin is yep. made to be the odd one out when she's telling the team to train up and to focus more on survival. When Fu is upset at Taisha 
and what they've put them all through. She's not allowed to have that strike back. When Togo not allowed to murder a cult. Yeah, when and that when, is bad. When Togo unveils the secrets of the actual universe and gets mad about it, she gets talked down from it. Just kidding, she gets punched down from it. Oh, I forgot about that. Punching Although that down. was a cool. <laughs> that, it was a cool scene because that is when they 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 detached from their mech, and it was pretty cool, and it was a cool character design. But then she punched her in the face, and they didn't even have the the gall to go through with the punch. Yeah, you it see cuts it, it connect, off. and you don't see it finish. And it's very unsatisfying. Yeah, it sucks. Um, Any anyone in this you're... show who who wants to stand up for themselves and to get mad is made into the enemy. Yeah, you're you're you know I didn't I didn't look at it that like that at first, but I mean as you talk about it, I can definitely see that becoming a a theme. Yeah. Can you start by talking about Togo? I need a moment. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so Togo is one of those characters that I had a lot of high hopes for. So, you rarely see normalization of differently abled people in anime. You'll have blind characters that have superpowers that really don't show it being differently abled. Not, not you know. I mean, you can talk about it being done well in a lot of shows, but I, I you rarely see it in anime. Mm-hmm. You rarely see characters who don't have the use of their legs or their arms uh be anything but a burden even in like code geass when you have nunnally who is you know blind psychologically blind and uh physically differently abled she isn't anything else but a plot device yep. it's always a plot device and so when togo comes on the scene um, it took us a while to even realize that she was in a wheelchair. Um, and you see her design a website. You see her use her in- intellect and her knowledge to help the Hero Club, which is something that they needed. And you see all of this work. There's there's even a time where she goes to the beach and they actually have a specialized wheelchair so that she can go swimming. And it's great. It's awesome. It's It's so good. And so you get this character who's smart, who's good representation, who's fun to listen to, and who's honestly a good friend. Yeah. And then you see her become Homura from Madoka Magica. <laughs> yep. Like almost 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 exactly Homura. Yeah. And so so when I first watched this show, I watched it because someone said, "Oh, it's like Madoka." And it's not Madoka like, it is like Madoka, and it starts with Togo, and she is a gun-toting, long-haired person who's so so angry and so upset at the the status quo that she just wants to shoot things and cause a destruction and a death. Protect her, her naive pink-haired friend. And, and Yuna's the only one whose hair tra- changes colors to pink. It is so... I'm not saying it's blatant. I'm not saying that this show absolutely 100% saw Madoka Magica and wanted to make Madoka. But I am saying that there was a lot of influence all the way up to having a, a episode 10 character backstory reveal. Um, Grant. Yeah. The tinfoil hat's calling to you. Oh, oh I'm gonna put it on. All right, uh, it's on. Okay, so you have you have an episode ten backstory reveal for a dark-haired character who uses guns, uh, and it's a tragic backstory about how she fell into this world. She is a veteran in hero fighting, just like Homura was, um, and even though she has amnesia, she seems to be super duper confident. And then she finds out, oh, we're being lied to. So in Madoka Magica, the TV show, she doesn't want Madoka to die. That's her that's her goal. So she resets the universe over and over again, and she goes to fight Wobbler Snatched. That's not really seen too much in this show, although there is a one time where she doesn't want to end the world because Yuna's on it. Although she does mention Karin, Fu, and Itsuki, she focuses on Yuna. But at the end, when she's like, yeah, I will destroy the world, let me lead this godlike figure to the tree that is Shinju to kill it, which is exactly how Rebellion ends, where 
Homura is trying to lead herself, who is a godlike monster witch, to get killed so that she can destroy the witch's labyrinth. It is almost a parallel. The only difference is, is that this would be the destruction of the universe and not just the destruction of the character. And then you have their pink-haired friend come up and stop them. And in Madoka, it's handled well because it's the big final fight. And in this show, it's not because it starts the big final fight, which... Mm. And so you have this character with a tragic backstory who is almost emotionless. And it's really weird because she's almost emotionless as a magical girl from the get-go. From the start of the show, she is almost but emotionless always when she's in a magical girl form. But when she's not in the magical girl form, she's back to being the the good Togo character, the character that we love. Mm-hmm. It's like there's almost a completely different character in the magical girl form. Mm-hmm. Um, you have a blonde, uh, a pink-haired character who's the title character, but really isn't the main character. Who, at the end of the show, does the ultimate sacrifice and removes herself from the person's life that cared about her the most. And Madoka, Madoka disappears from existence. And Yuki Yuna, Yuna becomes uh, comatose, but like... Once again, because the show doesn't really have stakes, it doesn't last. So it is this. This is almost parallel, and in, in, in I, I, I have we were watching with one of my friends. He doesn't watch a lot of magical girl shows. Who kept saying, "Oh, this is like Madoka," and he's only seen three episodes of Madoka. And I was like, I, "He was originally doing it because it was just a fun joke to jab at me," um, which was fine. But the more I watched it, the more he was right, and the more it made me upset. <laughs> um, so that's my opinion of Togo, is that she is essentially the exact same character that Homura was, just done worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's difficult to say that this is a Madoka ripoff. I really don't believe that. I feel like it could be Madoka-inspired. I feel like there's at least a lot of correlation Maybe they both have something that's an even deeper source they're pulling from. I don't know. Um, but it's it's difficult for me to call this a Madoka clone or even Madoka-like because I don't think it executes in nearly the same way. Um, and I'd agree. I'd agree. It maybe feels like a response to Madoka, but, you know, especially with, like, the ending. Um, it's a little... That's where it gets, you know, perhaps closest. Um... But it, it kind of feels like when people start comparing, like, Shonen Jump manga, where they're like, oh, this is just Dragon Ball, you know, or oh, this is just Naruto. Like, right, fair right. point, you can probably find the archetypes being repeated and stuff, but that's because editors are finding what works, and um, the authors are still going to drive that how they want to. You end up with different tones, you end up with different messages, um... Like, sure, Gone and, from Hunter Hunter is basically Gohan, including Bad Dad, but, like, he, he he functions differently in that he's not nearly as, as you know, sort of sharp as Gohan is. He's got Goku smarts, but also Goku for a dad. Um, you know, <laughs> it, it's so, like, it's that, the and the show takes itself in different directions. Um, it's and, quite a bit darker in its subject matter it takes wild trips outside of you know energy blasts and tournament fighting to get into weird places like an entire arc for a side character um where where it's like they're working as a bodyguard with like you know this like (sighs) mafia organization almost um and it's like incredibly complex given what it is right um that that's not the same thing you know um you can say that sasuke from naruto is that character i was describing kurapika from hunter hunter because they've got you know this whole clan and red eyes thing going on and that like Mm -hmm. edgy thing going on whatever but they still function very differently um Mm -hmm the authors have different intents for them. And I think that's the wedge here. Um, if someone was like, 
recommend me shows that are like Madoka, I wouldn't say Yuki Yuna because this has an entirely different trajectory. I, I'm going to retract my statement in terms of it's a, it's a, it, it's Madoka-like. Togo is Homer a lot. <laughs> and and that's that's where a lot of the 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 lines get drawn in my opinion yeah. where and and I think that's the it, it's it's that that's really where it is essentially mm-hmm. other characters are uh, are like we have like the mom friend in the form of mommy in the form of fu there's that connection blondies you know kind of taking care of things you have Karen, who's like um, a little bit of cracker. both Kyoko and Sakura. I mean, Sayaka. Sayaka. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, you know, but you're right. They're they're different enough that it's like it's fine. But Togo is very Homer like. Mm-hmm. It's it's like Togo is the the chain reaction starter to everything else becoming suspicious, but mostly it's Togo. Yes, yes, I, I would agree. I, I would, I would, yeah, that's where it is. It's So, in the same sense, like, the Hunter Hunter Naruto thing. It's like, there'll be one character who's really close, and then you start suspecting everything else. Like, oh, is this character actually that character? Is, is it, Probably not, but at least one thing was very close. Right. No, I, 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 I like that. Now that we're wrapping up our character discussions i i have a a question for you let's say that we have to cut one of these characters from the main cast whether it's for budgetary reasons or or for scope (laughs) we have to take one of these main five and you have to remove them entirely like it's you know not even like oh i know this person they're just not here like they have to no longer exist in this plot who would you remove so as much as i want to say yuki you know <laughs> as much as i want to say yuki Yuna, there is a very touching moment in which you see how toga and yuna's friendship blossomed and it helped toga become who she was which was a very important plot point and it was done very well because Toga's new to the town and she's worried that people will see her differently. And then Yuna is immediately like, let's be friends. We'll be friends. Let's go. And it's great. Um, which makes it hard to cut Yuna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but after that, Yuna doesn't really serve a purpose except that she's Toko's best friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, as much as I don't think... <sighs> Ah, oh, it's gotta be Karen, because let's be real. What does Karen bring to the table, plot wise? Not a lot. She's kind of on the periphery. You've got a great point there. Like she, you know, she like, she motivates Yuna, but like everybody motivates Yuna. Dude, y- Yuna's motivated motivated by like seeing a dude like drop something in the rain and pick it up she's like yeah let's be more like that guy let's go <laughs> oh yeah you make a good point um mm. you know what i would like mm. i would like to see karen's character injected into yuna yeah wouldn't it have been cool to have yuna have the survivor's skill mm-hmm. yeah and that would be wouldn't a major it... shift in her character maybe or maybe they would maybe but in our in well, in your fictional writing rewriting of this, then yes and yes, it would be more interesting. Yeah, and I I do like Karen, and I I but man, I just think that if you were to inject Karen into Yuna, you would have a much better show. And if you were to remove Karen from the show, you would have pretty much the same show. Yeah. Oh, but if if you remove the whole Yuna loses her taste thing, that was one of those things that thankfully the show doesn't explain and it does pay off. Because uh, you realize, oh, it's because she's, you know, she's a fan of Togo's snacks that she makes. That was a good moment. That was a because it did pay off. Um, it did pay off. I guess so, there's another compliment to pay the show. They don't explain much, um, which did keep us entranced and, and kind of figuring out the mysteries as we go. It just so happens that some of those turns just kind of suck a little bit. <laughs> or yeah, sometimes I, a lot I, of I it. think... You're you're right. That is the show didn't explain a lot, and there were there were two times where after they lost their uh their senses, where they lost their voice and their their taste, 
There was the first time when you immediately at the end of that episode went, oh, Atsuki likes to sing. She's a good singer. And she lost her voice. And we're like, oh, shit, that's actually pretty interesting. Um, and then at the end where it shows that Togo made Yuna snacks and that's how they became friends, you're like, wow, that's actually pretty powerful. Um, I don't even yeah, know if it, it, it was me ex- that said the same thing. It might have been someone else. But yeah, it's it, it was a good realization. It was a good group moment for us watching it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a tough one. What about you? Who'd your move? I mean, if you think Karin's that, that's that. You've almost convinced me, but like... It's gotta be Yuna. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing. So would you would you give Yuna's character to one of the other characters? If po- yeah, I would say Fu already functions very similar to Yuna, just with more angst. She's already the one who kind of tries to, you know, like keep everyone together and all smiles. It's just that Yuna is like the great big modifier to that, you know, right. like. F- Fu is is a multiplier. If if you're happy, she'll make you happier. But if you're angry, you know if you got a little minus sign out in front, then she's only going to magnify that. Um, right. But Yuna is just straight up addition. She takes everybody from wherever they're at and just brings them up, which to me is less interesting. Um, mm-hmm. In a way, she gets things done, but. You know, then we could map that into into Fu as well. Like, I I just feel like of of all the major contributions that Yuna has, most of them are dampening things that should be blazing with tension. Um, right, right. I want to let these things burn out, and then the characters can sort of file back through the ashes and and you know sort of make something new out of it have a little like you know rise again from from those you know said ashes um i feel like yuna prevents that she goes oh no a fire and then dumps it out (laughs) right right yeah so i guess i I just mm, you almost convinced me but i think i'm gonna have to still i think we still have to say yuna all right now do we have any uh hypotheticals you want to ask we do but there there's one last thing i want to talk about before that themes as we were watching this i just i have this problem where i where i try to look at a piece of media and extrapolate it into some big picture some you know broad concept and I can't not do it. It just always happens. I have to make it something else. Like, oh, this is this is actually a story about, you know, the dangers of capitalism and so on and so forth. I had trouble with this one. Did you get any like big picture out of this show? Um, no, I didn't. You know, I I think about like I'm sure you can apply themes of friendship, themes of sticking it out, themes of hope. You know, like basic themes. Um, but nothing, nothing in depth. I really thought they were going somewhere with like the themes of distrust, but that didn't go anywhere. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there was any themes. I feel so validated. This has been bugging me so bad. Um, man, like I thought, I thought finally they just came out with it. They're like, oh, flowers, you know, they bloom, but then they will and like it's like oh but then that's not really true because by the end of the show they reset all the circumstances and consequences they're going to face so they think okay well maybe it's about the life cycle all right but that doesn't really make sense either because it's not generational it's just that they they have this like life to death thing going on and and rebirth, but it's just the same characters in the same places they were before all of this. And so there is no like rebirth. It's just like a rewind and better yet. Like the, there's immortality involved. So it's like, no, it's not the life cycle. Like it's, it's a lie. Like, so maybe, right. yeah, the flower thing with like, like perennial flowers. Okay. But still like, that's just so weak. 
and it just it right. doesn't the you know like at some point you damage a plant enough and then yes it will just not grow back you know if you, if you get it at its roots what are the roots of the characters i don't know so that's out the window and it's just keep going is it about we talked to like is this about the idol industry apparently not nope that's out the window um is this about labor exploitation like in that same vein like sort of but also no because once again there's that healing factor um mm-hmm. i want to say it's about burnout and about you know people of a young age being expected to start working early and um you know like the education system too has this that's another one i, I pondered over where it's like well you know we continue to take you know advanced learning and just keep pushing it earlier and earlier okay so you know and then you know japan has cram schools and things you might attend in order to get into a better high school to get you into better college to get you the job you want you know that's a lot of pressure but they rarely touch on you know learning or evolving in this show it's everything goes back to square one so that's out um you know it, social conformity and and defiance that's kind of you know like well here are the the circumstances let's fight god kind of thing but then they don't they 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 yuna's like stop stop doing this stop fighting that god i'll punch this god and then it ends all right well then that's out (laughs) and anyways the they're fighting these things that just seemingly regenerate from hell it's just like constantly um there's there is no like like defy what it's just a it's just malice that exists you know it, it has no like meaning to it it has no there's not even like tertiary characters in the show that they can use to impose on them they develop no one besides the main five there's not even like a teacher character who's like significant in any way Besides the old lady at the piano, I take that back. She's in there a couple times, but she doesn't say anything of note. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't no. exist as a character. She's, she she even talks about how the school is underprepared to deal with this uh, differently able students, mm-hmm. and it's like, man, that could be something to talk about. But no. yeah, and like that's not to say that every show has to have some sort of message that is is there. It's just the problem is is that you know seems like it has that message but it doesn't yeah it's 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 as if it's revealing all of the contradictions the show never figured out um Mm -hmm. because like these are things that you can very broadly apply you know Mm -hmm. like just the the concept of like you know death and rebirth you know, as as long as you have a a functioning character arc, you can kind of apply that. But this show doesn't like character arcs. It in fact mm-hmm. likes to reverse those, um, or at least like have it and then forget it. Uh, it feels like at every turn you try to think of something coherent, and the show actively pushes against you. Nope, I I'd agree with or that. Rarely, would, absolutely, you rarely see a show like this. And that's not to say that yeah. it affects your surface level enjoyment. You know, yeah, I, but... I like I said when when I was done with this show, I thought about it for so long. Mm-hmm. It was constantly on my mind because there's something that was so close to being like something I really cared about. Um, I like the character designs. I like a lot of the stuff they do. I, I even like their filler arc. In fact, I even talked about how it would be kind of fun to have just a filler arc about this, um, like an entire arc, not just two episodes, um. But at the same time, it just never got there. Mm-hmm. It was it was like eating a freeze pop and you go to drink the last little bit of sugar water that you're like, Mm-mm-mm, give me that sugar water. And it's not even enough for a sip. And you're like, oh, man, <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, the thing stayed so frozen that you just didn't get any of that. It's just like, dang it. <laughs> right. You know, it's in it. This is. Yeah. This is automatic. How did this not happen? But it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. <laughs> um, so, do you have anything else to yes. say? <laughs> oh, 
Holy shit. <laughs> All right. Here's our two hypotheticals to take us out. It's time to have fun. Uh, we both expressed feelings that many characters in Yuki Yuna are two-dimensional. Um, so, like, they're flat, right? We mentioned Karin mm-hmm. before. Um, for Fu Senpai, she's kind of existing on two dimensions of, like, how can I lift Itsuki's burdens and how can I not be a burden? You know, and it's like that's that's like her character and everything is just between those those two uh dimensions, right? She is yes. she is a flat chart. Um What are your two dimensions, Grant? Um anger? Absolutely. Very angry person. I might have even said that on this podcast before. Um, so, anger, absolutely. Uh, so, my character would be constantly mad at just the littlest things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and what's the other axis? <laughs> Horny. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but I, I kept laughing to myself, so I had to explain what I was laughing about. Um, my other axis would what do they probably call that? be because we can't say, we can't say hangry because that's a thing already. Or horny. Oh. No, um, uh, my, you know what it is my other... there's a word for it it's right wing male <laughs> <laughs> god damn this is a that's magical funny. girl podcast today <laughs> hey everybody <Bitchin'. laughs> um i would say i would say so i have i have two states of being angry which is also my most productive state of being, which isn't healthy. Um, but also my other state of uh, being, which is unmotivated. <laughs> <laughs> so like, like my character would just be a, a slacker tsundere, and I would never, ever learn to channel my anger into productivity. Ooh. What about you, Brantley? So what you'd be the dimensions? rare, like, Ray oscar combination prototype. <laughs> Yeah, man, dude. that would be me. That's that is. You could me. be a new type with that kind of characterization, dude. Um, okay. I don't know enough <laughs> Japanese. I, I to... it's a Gundam thing. I think it's a Gundam thing. Um, I'm reaching. <laughs> I really am. Um, okay. Uh, my my two dimensions would be, um, w- one is extremely funny, and the other is cool, but only cool. And extremely funny when I'm podcasting with someone who is funnier and cooler than I am all the time. So, <laughs> that's that's in between those. That's like the that's the tension between those those two angles. I'm 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 glad you got a real 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 bitchin' answer there. <laughs> I had to come up with it beforehand. I cheated. <laughs> These are important to me, Grant. Um, last question. There's that one episode where Yuna makes a weird noise with her mouth. Do you like the weird whistle? What would your weird mouth sound be? You get to make any sound oh, with dude. your mouth on command. What is it? Um. Okay, so <laughs> I thought you were going to just a uh, fart. <laughs> <laughs> An incredibly stuck um, fart. So, so I work in a museum, and I work near a train. <laughs> We have a train in our museum, like a real ass train, mm. not like not like one we put in our museum. We built the museum around the train. That's a fact. Mm. Um, and it makes this really loud bell noise. I hate it. <laughs> However, it's a powerful, powerful sound. <laughs> and if I could just make train bell noises like all aboard, like ding dongs, uh-huh. I would fucking rule this country. <laughs> you would. There's so much you can do with ding dong noises. That's incredible. You you would have what about, so much power. What about you? What's your uh uh kettle whistle noise that you would make when you saw your friend's eye patch? I would I want <laughs> for so many purposes, I want the parry sound effect from Street Fighter Three Third Strike. <laughs> I 
like like just incredible utility you know oh dude you're right <laughs> oh man that's a good answer because because here's the thing let's say you're getting mugged right <laughs> And you and then, like give me your wallet oh my and you, God, and you do say mind no. Games? And then, <laughs> what? Do mind games on them? Yeah, like and they go to punch you and it hurts, but you make the parry noise <laughs> and they're like, oh shit, did he just parry me? Let's go, let's and go. then he'd freak out because every time he hits you, you make the parry noise. <laughs> and he's like, I'm doing no damage. I gotta get out Downloaded. of here. Downloaded. Holy shit. <laughs> <gasps> oh, those are some really fucking good hypotheticals, Brantley. Okay, it's over. All right, do you have any other things to add to Yuki Yuna as a hero? Nothing about... Normally, like, I walk away from these episodes like, like, oh, we should have talked about that. Like, Raising Project had, like, me torn up. So I was like, oh, we didn't mention this. But, like, this? I'm, I'm deflated about things. Yeah, man. I, I, I wanted to talk about... Yuki Yuna as a hero for so long. I'm I was my drive- I, I, I want to make my mouth sound be a deflating balloon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, if I get sick of a conversation, I just open my mouth and make that sound, and I walk backwards away from them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for listening to this podcast. If you enjoyed what you've listened to, please like comment and subscribe <laughs> yeah hey we'll we'll see you in the next one uh we're planning on doing a maho a maho uh between revolutionary girl utana which we started before um and another show about girls fighting with swords in a dramatic way shoujo kageki review starlight um or as it's better known shoujo insert star uh kageki review starlight you gotta fit the star in there <laughs> Check that out if you want to see what we're watching, or don't. We are not your dads. <laughs> <laughs>